Welcome to The Haunting of the Paranormally Possessed. Today I review Grave Encounters 2. Fear is just a word, reality is much worse. Brought to us by the Vicious Brothers, directed by John Poliquin, starring Richard Harmon, Dylan Playfair, and Stephanie Bennett. Grave Encounters 2 picks up with the idea that Grave Encounters 1 is an actual movie. And the film takes place with a bunch of vloggers trying to figure out whether it was staged or if it was real events. There's one group of vloggers who are film students that decide to retrack and revisit this asylum to find out if Lance Preston, or in this film, Sean Rogerson, is real or fake, and if the events that occurred were just staged. For a sequel, this is a very different concept, and I enjoyed that. They're taking something that they created in the sense of fiction, and they're trying to make it real. Bringing in the idea of vloggers and a bunch of YouTubers, like we're seeing Sean C. Phillips talking about this film, and just the idea of them just going and revisiting this to find out if it's real or fake, is interesting because again we're playing off of the style of the found footage film we're doing this as a documentary and i like the idea that it's a group of film students and the one person alex who's just struggling to find his art is going out there and be like you know what i found the perfect idea for my film and that is to do a documentary on if grave encounters is real or fake. It was really interesting how they brought in the idea that the character Lance Preston is actually a real person. And I enjoyed the fact that they use the real name of Sean Rogerson, because that's his real name in real life. So they're really playing up to the idea that this could have been a real film. And what happened to Sean in the first one actually could have happened. The characters that we see in this film are a bunch of just partying film students who are just going on an adventure. Our main protagonist, Alex, is kind of a dick throughout the film, and his cameraman, Trevor, is probably the most likable of the characters. And the situations that they put themselves in, you really are trying to root for Trevor, and you don't really like the direction that Alex goes in. So you have your good and your bad, which is nice when you're developing a story. I also liked that they tied in a lot of the first film in the sequel. We're seeing a lot of the same rooms, we're seeing a lot of the similar situations, but the jump scares are different in this one. The tactics that we're expecting and the places that we think ghosts are gonna pop out don't actually pop out. And if you've seen the first one, you're gonna be waiting for that moment and that's what's gonna keep you on the edge of your seat because you're gonna expect it and then when it doesn't happen and it happens in another room, you're scared again. And they did a really good job reinventing themselves and how they're gonna scare their audience. As much as I love this story, there is a lot to not like about it. What it comes down to is they're trying to explain everything. Like they're trying to give a cause and effect. They're giving that reason for something that doesn't need to exist. Halfway through the film, they're explaining why the asylum is haunted and why these things have happened and in the first one that mystery was the charm and in this one the reasoning is the downfall like we had a really good film and then it just turned into like a cookie cutter story that didn't really feel like it was a part of this grave encounter series though i did like the jump scares i felt that they didn't really improve on the look of our ghost if that's what you want to call them, our spirited figures. We see them a lot more in this one, and I think that is a big downfall because they look so bad that you can't really get scared. Though the situations they're in is more intense, it doesn't mean that it's actually scarier. It just makes it a little more silly. And I think when you're trying to make a movie where you're gonna scare people, you're not doing it when you're too busy making them laugh and chuckle at the fact that this is ridiculous. Just how they look, and how they're interacting with the film students. Now because of the direction this film went, I wasn't a big fan of the ending, and I think if they were trying to do it in such a way that they wanted to expand the universe and make more of these movies, they could have done it a little better because it felt more like a sellout, and it was pretty lame. Overall, Grave Encounters 2 definitely did not live up to Grave Encounters 1. I appreciated the idea that they're tying in vloggers and making their first film seemed like it's a real film or a hoax, but the way they executed it was pretty bad. There wasn't the scares that I was looking for. It wasn't as like intense 
as the first one because they were throwing it in your face instead of subtly letting you take in the atmosphere. The ghastly ghouls were not that ghoulish, they were pretty lame, which is disappointing, and the characters weren't as enjoyable as I hoped. Though Trevor was really good, Alex just was a real dick. I wouldn't really recommend checking this one out. If you're a fan of the first one, you're probably gonna be disappointed with this sequel. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this two crazy Halloween parties out of five. Thanks for watching, like this video, and comment below with your thoughts on Grave Encounters 2. And if this is your first time to the channel, make sure to subscribe.